morning, everybody. Um, my name is Meg, and I'm an instructor for McDowell Environmental Center. And this morning, I wanted to show you all my most recent pet, which is 10 Madagascar hissing cockroaches. So Madagascar is a island that's off the coast of Africa, which is the area that these cockroaches are native to. Um, in the wild, they would be living in forested areas where there's a lot of canopy cover and there's lots of um, fallen leaves for them to munch on and hide underneath. Um, these are different from the roaches that we have here in Alabama in a few different ways. Um, one way is that they um, really are picky about what they eat. And we can get into what, they're talk what they eat um, a little bit later on in this stream, but that's the main difference for me. Um, a lot of the roaches that we have here in Alabama might be found in your trash cans, for instance, <laughs> if you, um, and unfortunately, normally they would be living in the woods, but you know, if there's something enticing for them to eat in your trash can, they might find your way into your living space. Um, these are not that way though. They only eat fresh fruits and fresh veggies, um, and they eat a little bit of dog food, and they have a special way that they drink their water, um, which we can get into a little bit later on in the stream. But I've had these Madagascar hissing cockroaches for about two months now. Um, I'm still kind of a little bit of a new roach owner, so um, we're going to do this stream and I'm going to answer as many questions as I can answer and tell you about my um, experience with them so far. So if we want to, I can take some out. There's actually one right here that I can pick up. He kind of buried himself a little bit in the substrate. Which substrate is this uh, kind of loose soil that they're living in? This is actually made out of coconut fiber for these guys specifically. I'm trying to dust them off a little bit. So we can see him a little better. There he is. <laughs> Still a little covered up. But they're insects. They're actually closely related to termites. So they have six legs. Those legs are actually have a few barbs on them. Not for defense. Um, they don't hurt or anything like that. But they're actually really great climbers. And those barbs help them um, climb up um, slick surfaces. Like they can actually climb this glass in particular. The reason that they're such good climbers is actually that they don't have wings. So if I flip him around, you can see his back. If an insect is an insect that has wings, especially if they're shaped like this, like a beetle or maybe another cockroach or something like that, you might see a seam going down the middle of their back. But as you can see, this one doesn't have a seam because he doesn't have any wings. He cannot fly. And that's another way that they're different from the ones here in Alabama. The um, wood roaches and like German cockroaches that we have here can fly and they have wings. So that's another a weight off of your mind for this stream. This roach isn't going to fly anywhere necessarily. They also have um, fuzzy antenna that they use to kind of um, just gather information and figure out where they are. And if you can see, their head is also um, kind of pointed down all the time. <laughs> so their eyes and their mouth and like all of the parts of their face are kind of on the bottom of their head, which is always looking down. Another it might even be considered to be an adaptation for the environment that they live in. They're going to be on the forest floor looking for things to eat and scavenging. So there he is. I think they're pretty cute. Um, one other thing that I can point out while I'm holding this one is that I can tell that it's a male. And the reason why is that he actually has little horns. Um, not necessarily, um, well actually I guess they do have a little bit of a function. He can use the horns as a defense if he's trying to defend his territory from another male in this tank for instance. Um, but the these horns and the females are actually also a little bigger. That tends to be the case in the natural world. The females tend to be a little bit bigger, a little bit, um, a little bit more hardy than the males are. So that's just one. Let me see if he'll come back and maybe eat some of this apple. He might just bury himself again. This is a little bit of a weird time for them to be out because it's the middle of the day. These creatures are nocturnal, so they're mostly um, active at nighttime. Um, so we'll see if he wants to come over here and eat some of this apple. It would be really cute. <laughs> but he might just bury himself. Wanna go? Oh, it looks like he's going to Alrighty. I'm trying to be really careful with putting him down because once again, their legs are a little sticky. I wouldn't want to hurt him by trying to pull him off myself. I want him to come off of my hand on his own. Nah, you want to get underneath the bark. That's okay, that's understandable. So as I mentioned, um, he's not the only one in here. I actually have 10 of them. 
Maybe once he gets into a spot where he's settled in, I can pick up the rest of the bark and show them all at once. <laughs> but yeah, there are actually 10 of these Madagascar hissing cockroaches in this tank. And um, for the size of this tank, that's about the limit. You know, they don't require a ton of space, but especially since there are males in here that can get a little territorial, I want to be sure that they have enough space to spread out and have their own space to be in so that they are less aggressive. Katie would like to know, just kind of, if someone was thinking about adopting some of these as a pet, what, what should they know? What has your journey been? So, um, honestly, I would say that Madagascar hissing cockroaches make really good pets because they're super easy to take care of. Um, I didn't really need to purchase very many things to ensure that they had like enough of the um, space that they needed and also to be sure that they had all of the resources that they needed. Um, this is a five gallon tank. It has 10 roaches in it. And like I mentioned, um, that's probably about as many as I would want to have in this tank so that they have enough space. So that means if you only have like one or two, you could have even a smaller tank than this. They don't need a ton of space. Um, they also need substrate, which is this kind of dirt substance that's um, on the bottom of this tank. That's just an area for them to like bury themselves in and also like a source of moisture for them. So, um, so I actually also missed this substrate frequently so that they can have some moisture in there as well. Um, it's just one of these little bags. <laughs> this one is made out of coconut fiber. Um, on Google told me that, um, several websites on Google told me that uh, coconut fiber is the best thing for um, Madagascar hissing cockroaches. So you just need a little bag of that. Um, this is my mister bottle so that I can mist their tank to be sure that it's nice and humid in there. Um, they only eat fresh fruits and veggies. so. Um, this is an apple that I have. That little slice of apple came off of this apple. I'm just going to eat this one later. But um, they're really easy to feed in that sense. So if you've got some fresh fruit that you ate for breakfast, you can just save a little piece of it for them and throw it in there with them. Or like if you're making some vegetables for dinner that night, you can also just like cut off a little bit of the raw vegetable and save that for them as well. They also eat dog food or cat food as a source of protein. So I have a little bit of dog food. There's lots of dogs at camp, so I didn't even have to buy this dog food when I got these roaches. I just asked one of my awesome neighbors for some. Um, as far as water goes for them, if you look in here, um, I have a cotton ball that's soaked in water that they actually drink water out of. And the reason why is that um, with their heads pointing down, with um if they try to drink water out of a dish they actually run the risk of drowning which is really sad because all of their um parts of their face are like in one spot you know they're always looking down so you can either soak a cotton ball in water for their water source or i've also tried this stuff before it's called cricket quencher it's like a gel substance like a hydrating gel substance that um cockroaches can eat and also crickets and other like feeder insects can eat as well just to ensure that they can eat their water and um, not run the risk of drowning and then the only other thing that I would suggest that you get is a little bit of petroleum jelly. Um, it, there's a little layer of petroleum jelly on the top of this tank, and that's just an extra preventative measure for me to ensure that they don't get out. <laughs> there's also a lid for this tank, so I don't think that they will, but just a little bit of an extra preventative measure. If they try to walk on this petroleum jelly or this Vaseline, then um, they'll slip and not be able to walk up all the way to the top. So that's really all that they need. Um, you change their bedding out, their substrate out a couple of times a month. Um, be sure that they're misted. Be sure that their um, fresh food that they get doesn't get too old. Um, they're pretty picky, so if the food's in there for over two days, they might not need it. Um, but honestly, other than that, that's all that you need. Awesome. Very easy to take care of. Going back to their natural environment, Paige would like to know if you know anything about how people in Madagascar think about them. Are they pests there or mm. do you know anything about that? You know, honestly, that's a really great question because I don't know the answer to that. I'm really not sure. Um, I know that they're very common in Madagascar, um, that they're found in like decaying logs and things like that. Um, but the things that I've read about them in Madagascar are mostly in like about their natural habitat and forested areas. So I don't really know if they're considered to be pests in like residential areas, if that was the question. Yeah. Good question, though. Yeah, yeah, I'll have to look into that a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Awesome. If you have any more questions, go ahead and toss those up in the comments. 
if Meg thinks it's okay, what I'm going to have her do is lift her bark in a second, mm -hmm. show us all the friends. I'll come over there, and that'll be our, our grand finale. Awesome. Thank That's you great. so much to everyone who's already tuned in. Put those questions in the comments. Yeah, thanks y'all so much. I hope that more people um, consider getting these as pets, because I think that they get mixed up with the cockroaches we have here pretty often, which are totally different, and I think they just get a bad rap. So there they are. Like I said, there's 10 in total. The one that I was holding earlier is still um, in the substrate, but there should be nine here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. <laughs> I, always just, I always count just to be sure. But they love this bark. They, As I mentioned, they're nocturnal, so they aren't big fans of the sunlight. So they're pretty often if um, I'm in there during the day underneath the bark. And as you can see, this one's a male because it's got horns. Um, and one like this one that does not have horns would be a female. Awesome. We got one more question from Kim. Kim wants to know a little bit, why are they called hissing cockroaches? Oh, excellent question. So that's like the best part about them, right? That's the part that makes them famous. So these cockroaches actually hiss. Um, and that's why they're called hissing cockroaches. It's sometimes used as a defense mechanism so when i'm holding them and i'm like um, handling them i try to be sure that they're not hissing because that to me means that they're calm and comfortable but they can also hiss if they're male to attract a mate to attract a mate or um if they're male um, they also hiss if they're fighting just to you know if they won the fight they want to be sure that everyone else around knows that they won that fight so they'll hiss yeah awesome thank you so much to those of you who asked questions thank you for everyone who tuned in Meg, do you have one little wrap-up thing to anyone who finds a cockroach in their house or mm. maybe wants to keep these as a pet? Just how do you feel about cockroaches? Has your opinion changed with these, these new friends? Yes. I, my opinion has definitely changed about cockroaches. I would even say that like on my journey of being an environmental educator that my opinion on like all bugs and insects has changed a lot. Like the more that I've learned about them and learned about like why they're beneficial and why we need to have them around, um, that like curiosity has turned into admiration, you know, over the years. So with these cockroaches, I've just learned a lot about how um, the cockroaches that we have here that are in forested areas are decomposers, and we have to have them around in order for the forest habitat to continue growing. Um, and just to ensure that like the things that are um, falling in the forest end up being decomposed, like the thought of leaves falling off of the ground and never going away is really <laughs> bizarre to me. Um, so that's the main role that cockroaches here in Alabama play. Um, but unfortunately, if they're in your house, they're not really doing that job, right? So um, if you have them in your house, I would maybe just suggest, you know, I don't want to make any assumptions about your living space, but just be sure that it's not as enticing for the cockroaches to be in there. You know, they're probably just looking for food or a dry place or a place to be warm. So just being sure that it's easy, not easy for them to get in and just being sure that it's not a good place for them to live is probably the best thing to do. But otherwise, yes, please, please get one of these Madagascar hissing cockroaches as a pet because they're really fun. They're really cute, I think, and they're super easy to take care of. Awesome. Thank you so much to everyone who tuned in. And let's say bye to Meg and the cockroaches. Bye. Bye. <laughs>